Okay, cool coming at you. I'm going to do an oil change on a 2013 Volkswagen Beetle convertible. What we're going to put in there for an oil filter is a man filter, W719 forward slash 45, and five quarts of 540 Castrol SPT edge uh, for the Volkswagen. It says so right on it, see? Okay, and here is the original nut that came out and it takes a uh, Allen wrench to take it off and we don't use those anymore that's just their idea of a joke so what we're going to use is a 14 millimeter wrench on my new plug that's uh, magnetic to get the the metal pieces out of there and I got it up on my rhino lifts here well I wish it was a lift anyways here we go as you can see, and it's 14 millimeter. Yep. Okay, I'll turn it back on as soon as I get it off. Bye. Okay, cool. Come back at you. It's going to be a little series. I'm going to patch together the oil change. I just loosened it up. The the nut. You need a paper towel on the ground here to put that nut on that on that paper towel. Once that's done actually taken off so let's do that my hands going to be dirty so I'm going to turn this off with you. again let's see if I can see if I'm doing this okay so you can see it okay back it all off be careful it is hot okay she's ready there we go yeah, I'm going to put this down here. It's Like I said, it's a magnetic nut. I don't see anything on it. There's your oil really pouring out. It's like water, huh? Just what needs to be done. Let's get that oil out of there. And I'm going to be running the synthetic test again. Seeing that the fan actually came on. After I shut the engine off. I'm going to be moving through the 530 Haveline after the synthetic to see if there's going to be a change in the heat sink after the engine's turned off because that's what kicked in there was the fact that it was hot. Here's your fans from the bottom. Okay, here, one here and one here. This one's for the transmission. It's looks like it's bigger than the one for the engine. I obviously think the tranny is going to get hot. And I don't doubt it, the way they do things nowadays is rather uh, incompetent, to be honest with you. It's nothing like I would ever do. Okay, I'm going to wait until that drains all out of there, and then I'll put, put it, uh, the plug back on again. And then we'll go up to the... Uh, I do see a little bit of dirt on the uh, plug on the magnetic part. I'll take the uh, oil filter off and, and change that. Okay, this is cooler out. i get the oil off my hand before I touch this thing. Okay, cool, coming back at you. When you get the oil, see the oil dripping, which it is right now, that into your oil pan. Then it's about time to put your plug back in again. I wiped it all off with a paper towel. So we're good to put it back in again. So let's see if I can do this and see what I'm doing at the same time here with the camera. Okay. There we go. Don't change out your wa washer unless you're, you've got a leak. I know they, everybody tells you to do it. Don't bother. Some of the cars come with a washer that lasts almost for as long as you own the car. I've never had to change one out except for on a Volkswagen. That's what we're working on. And this is a good washer. Hard to find one that actually will keep it from leaking. That's what I found. Uh, Toyotas and uh, Scion and all the, uh, the the Nissan out here, Juke, no problem with the washer. But Volkswagen, I've always had, not the, not the Eos, 2007 Eos. But this car, I have had a problem with a leak. I found the right washer. It just takes the right washer. 
Okay, now once you tighten it down, you, if you're from the old school like me, you'll know when it's tight enough. Just start to tighten it, and then you'll feel it. You'll know it. It's tight enough. Okay, we're done underneath the car. All we have to do is take the oil that we have here, put it over in a five-gallon gas can, and take it over the recycler when it's full. Cooler out. Okay, this part here on the Volkswagen oil change, uh, 2013 Volkswagen convertible turbo charge, 2.0 liter. 2 .0 liter. Uh, here's your oil filter. Here's your oil filter wrench. Here's the size. Cap type oil filter wrench, 76 millimeter by 8 by 14 flute, Volkswagen 2.0 liter turbo. Here it is on your ratchet. Now you notice the once I take the cap off the oil, it, you have a metal aluminum here with no tab. Okay? You can't get it off, right? So what are you going to do? You're going to take a screwdriver like this, that, that's the only way I know of, and then poke it down through like that. And then you pop it off like this. Now when you do that, as you can see, you get to, then you have to pull off, pull it off by hand. Now what's going to happen when you do that? Some of those metal pieces are going to drop down inside. Then it's going to go down inside of your car. Now there was some smart person that thought that's the answer, instead of using a little piece of cardboard and stuff. Now inside of this oil uh, funnel, you see there's a, a wire mesh to keep those, any parts from going into your car like I'm describing to you. you see it? Let's see if I can do it better here. Well, hopefully you can see it. It's a multitask 5-in-1 funnel. Okay, anyways, that'll keep the metal pieces from going down into your car. Okay? And that's what you need to do. And I'm going to put 5 quarts of oil in it with a new oil filter. That should top it off and it should show it full. You're going to have to take your oil, and some oil, and put it, what I'm going to do is, well you can put your finger in or you can dump it out in the cap. And what I do is I just dump a little bit out in the cap. There we go. And uh, now what you're going to do with it is put it on the, the uh, seal, all the way around the seal so that it will seal it properly and not leak on you. Okay? And uh, this is it. I'll make sure I, I did it right after I turn the video off, okay? But uh, make sure you get, don't be afraid to put a lot on there so that you have it all nice and wet and oily. Okay, this segment is done for now. Back off a little bit so you can see all that. Also wear some safety glasses and some rub, some uh, protective gloves like you have, I have on here. Okay, later. Cooler coming at you with the oil change and we're at the oil filter at this point. I'll just move the oil filter wrench away. Out of my way here, put it on over there. This rubber hose is snapped down into these snap downs, okay? They'll be in, on top of the oil filter. What you want to do is take, the, take it out. I already had done it, as you notice that. And stick it out behind the uh, oil dipstick like that. Now your oil filter is ready to come off of there. Let's see if I get this wrench right. Okay, the wrench is uh, proper. Then you start loosening it. Loosen it up to the point, and wait a minute, forgot one thing. Make sure you put your rags underneath it because sometimes oil will come out of there and uh, start leaking down, so thank goodness I remembered it when I did. Uh, okay, there we got it there. So it doesn't get on your uh, uh, alternator belt. You don't want it squealing and going around and spinning and all that stuff. Okay, now that we once we get it loosened up, and we just did, now we can take it off by hand. So what we want to do is take the oil pan, like this, have it ready, and uh, take your oil filter off. It shouldn't leak too much oil once you get it up, and you're going to put it in that pan. It's really hot. I think I'll use something more. Another paper towel here would work. See, I'm, I'm changing this oil right after, not right after the I got it home from an interstate drive and the fan come on to cool it off after the engine was turned off. Anyways, once you get it to a point where you can pull it up and out of there, as you can see it's coming right off. And I gotta keep that rag on there because it's hot. 
This isn't the first time I've changed oil. Everything is a test for me. Now you pull it straight up and out. Because if it leaked any, it would go back down into the hole. Okay, there we go. It, this time it didn't leak, and I get lucky that time. Okay, now let's go back and get the other oil filter, which I've already put oil on the seal. She's ready to go on. Careful not to drop it. Your hands might be a little bit uh, slippery from the oil. Let's just set this right here like that. And what we want to do is wipe off the outer edge. There might be some dirt that might have got in there. Okay. You'll know. Okay. There we go. You'll know once you got it all off of there. Because that will interfere with your seal. Sealing back up again. Okay. Now let's take that excess paper out of there. There was no excess oil that came out. We're lucky. Okay, now we, what we're going to do is put this down there. See how it's threaded? Let's just set that down there like that and start spinning it on. There we go. It's taken now. Take a bit for it to get into the threaded area. And all I want to do is tighten it down by hand. I'm not going to use no wrench on it. And if we're lucky, it won't leak. And we're not just going to do it with our left hand. We're going to have to take that paper towel to get a good grip on it. Let's use that same one again. We'll put that paper towel over the top. And now I'm going to use my right hand because I have more strength in my right. I'm right handed. And what we're going to do is tighten it down until we can't tighten it any further. And believe it or not, the suction of the automobile will do the rest. It won't go down any further. Okay. Now we're ready to put the oil in the car. That'll be the next set. Cooler out. Okay, this is Cooler back at you with the 2013 Volkswagen Beetle convertible oil change. Now we have the funnel in its position. There's a small hole with a metal around that hole, but I have the proper funnel that will actually fit down in there. We also have a screen inside here that will catch any metal pieces that might have come off of the covering. As you can see, you had to use, I had to use a screwdriver to press down in there to get that metal piece off of there. I don't know who, who didn't put a tab on there to get it off there. Usually it's cardboard that's on there, and it's easy to get it off. But I've seen the, the aluminum pieces fall down in there. Okay, anyways, we're going to put the oil to it. And keep your eye and make sure nothing's coming up and over. Okay. Here we go. I don't have to hold on to the oil filter, um, oil funnel, because it's down in that hole. It's being held by the funnel uh, spout deal. Okay, anyways. This, uh oh starting to move. Better let it go down in. It's taking a while to get through that uh, filtering area. Okay, this will be quart number one and we're going to put five of them in there just like I'm doing now, as you can see. Once it starts to drip like you see it's dripping, then that's enough. You can put something underneath the handle here so that it has something to hold it on this end. As I noticed that it started to tip a little, but see it's, it's flexible down at the bottom. And that's what happened when there was more weight on there. Okay, I opened up, I can throw this one away now into the garbage pail. I've got all the covers off and the metal taken off. Huh, it seems like I didn't do the last one for some reason. For your information, if you didn't see it early on, I'm trying to get this cover off here. Boy, this on there nice and tight, ain't it? Okay, I got it. I want you to see that piece of aluminum they put on there. Now, you, now we'll go all the way around it. And do you see a tab? There is no tab. 
Does it come right off? No, it doesn't. See what I mean? So what you, the only way to do it that I know of, if you got, if you anybody knows how to do that, do it on a forum and show us how to get this off of here. And I doubt you can do that. And then take your screwdriver and pop it back like that. And then you can put your finger in here and pull the rest of it off. But believe, trust me, some pieces of that aluminum will fall into the oil in here. And if you don't have that screen in the funnel, it's going to go into your engine. And that's not what we want to happen, is it? Is it? There. Who was the incompetent? Whoever thought that up, huh? Okay. <laughs> Terrible. Never seen nothing like it. I've been around a long time. But you know, they're trying to sell you something that's not not uh, worth it. You're paying like almost ten dollars a quart on this stuff. Where is it now? About nine dollars, eight dollars and ninety something cents, I think, per quart. My goodness, I could buy. Uh, the Havoline for 250. I was buying it for 250. So it's just about one. You can get at least four, a little more than four quarts for this price of one of these. But this is for me. It's just a test. Let's start over here. Second quart with that little filtering screen down in there. It slows the oil from going into the automobile. So far I haven't seen any metal, but I have seen it before, that aluminum. Whoop. Gotta be careful, I don't even want one drop going down in there. I guess eventually that little area where it, it's got that ripple, which can make it formable, it'll eventually tip over to the point where it'll actually the handle will touch down there and catch itself so I'm not going to worry about it. No leaks so far. Put the rest of it in there now. I actually don't need to show you how to do five if I can show you a couple and what I, the way I've been doing it. Once it's done, you want to drive the car and bring it back and put it on a, a, a flat surface to check the oil and to check for uh, underneath it for leaks. If you see that the ground has a leak on it, then you, this this garage has a lip on the way in. Don't need the Rhino drive up. Um, anyways. Uh, what I'm trying to say is that I don't need to put it on those uh, rhinos there. But this lip on the garage, when you, once you start coming in, you see how it's pointed upwards. It'll point upwards and you can get underneath it enough to see if there's any leaks. You can also check from the above for the oil filter. Just look around it, the area, and look to see if you see any oil. Which there's none there now. If there's oil later on, then you know you got a leak. Okay. Rhino ramps. Do you ever have a word that doesn't come to your mind when you need to say it? The rhino ramps, you don't need them to look underneath to see if there's a leak. Okay, I'm going to toss this out and uh, I'll call it a day for as far as the oil change goes. You can see how I did it. So, y'all take care. Uh, don't turn your car into cash cow for a service department uh, where you bought the car. You don't need this. Uh, oil change by them if you can do it yourself do it yourself rotate your own tires and uh, the car is manufactured to uh, go 36,000 miles three years under warranty it came out of your MSRP by the way they're not going to tell you it did but it did and uh, that the manufacturer and I believe it too the plugs are good for up to probably a hundred thousand miles your uh, uh, DSG or tranny fluid which is this good stuff down here is good for 40,000 miles this is a direct shift gearbox oil SAE 75 the number is G052182 A2 is good for the Volkswagen Beetle out here I had bought it from Volkswagen 
you'll also need a filter uh, I changed the filter at that time it's a uh, two, 02E398051 for your tranny okay so I'm not going to be doing that anytime soon maybe after 40,000 miles or so but I won't be doing it now because the car is too new I've only got about 5,000 no 6,000 miles roughly on the car right now okay this is cooler and the uh, what I call the X03 Volkswagen convertible year 2013 2.0 liter turbocharged engine and it's a great car thus far um, take care and enjoy your ride cooler does bye bye okay cool coming back at you this is the uh, after the oil change we're looking now down to the area of the oil filter to see if there's any oil that has dripped down around anything and it's nice and dry I know now now remember that I hand tightened this the way I did it in the video and that's all looking good down there everything looks good okay and remember that the fans can come on after the engine's been turned off after a, a nice long drive on the interstate if you remember uh, from the other video that I did that the fans were running and the engine was turned off after a ride on the interstate now let's look underneath the car and see if there's any oil dripped out of it because I just drove the car now after the oil change Okay, it's alright, I had to point down at the ground there, but what can you do? Uh, as you can see, she's nice and dry, there's no dripping. Not a drop of oil underneath here. Let's see what I can do. Let's see if we can see the plug, there's the plug right there, see it? There's no oil there at all, and you can see that the uh, washer took, and that's about probably the third time I changed oil with that same washer. You don't need to change washers unless you see this dripping, and it's not dripping. They, those washers last forever. If you don't believe me, try it. If you get a good washer, you don't ever want to get rid of it, because the next one may not work. Okay, this is cooler, and uh, the oil change finalized, all buttoned up, no dripping, no nothing. Take care, all of you guys. Enjoy your ride, I do. Cooler out, bye.